May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. We are deep into the season of Lent now, and we are also deep into the Gospel of John. Now, while the story that we just heard happens early in John's Gospel, it is a story that so captures the good news of Jesus. The Jesus of John's Gospel is a Jesus who welcomes, who loves, who accepts. It is also a Gospel rich in symbolism. There is a kind of sacram sacramentality to the Gospel, where the outward and visible experience communicates to us a truth about the inward and spiritual experience. So just a reminder from um, uh, your confirmation or baptismal classes, the definition of sacrament is an outward and visible sign of an inward and spiritual grace. And we heard echoes of that in uh, the college, the prayer that we said at the beginning of the service, where we ask God to keep us both outwardly in our bodies and inwardly in our souls. This concept of uh, sacrament is really important to who we are as uh, a Christian community. Unlike so much of Western thought in John's Gospel, this material and spiritual are not separate, but very much part of each other. John is a Gospel that shows us what it means for the divine Jesus to be fully human. And as such, it also shows us what it means to be human, which is really an integration of body and soul, of flesh and spirit. And we see this integration so well in today's Gospel. The Samaritan woman at the well is in need of water. She has come to the well in the heat of the day, under the bright light of the sun, to draw water from that well that is so familiar to her. She has drawn water from that well for years. All of her ancestors before her did as well, all the way back to Jacob. And as she approaches the well, she meets a stranger who asks her for a drink. The stranger is a Jew. She is a Samaritan. Samaritans and Jews don't mix. Moreover, Jewish men do not speak to Samaritan women, ever. So just an aside, I want to remind you that women in this culture were not able to make a living for themselves. They relied on men in their lives, be it fathers or husbands, to provide for their basic needs of food, shelter, and clothing. The fact that this woman has had five husbands and is now living with a sixth man who is not her husband, is not a question of morality. It often gets interpreted that way, but that's not what's going on here. It is not a question of morality for her. It is a question of survival. A lot of times this fact is lost on readers of the Gospel. She is not a woman in need of forgiveness. Unlike the story of the woman who is an adulterer, that is about ready to be stoned, and Jesus says, um, you know, whoever among you is without sin, cast the first stone, and the crowd disperses, and then um, he tells the woman to go and sin no more, that her sins have been forgiven. This is a very different story than that. This is a woman who is in need of compassion and love, which is exactly what Jesus offers her. He offers her welcome, love, and acceptance of exactly who she is. So back to the story. Jesus asks her for a drink, and she is shocked. How can you ask a drink of me, she wonders. And Jesus tells her that if she knew who she was speaking to, she would in turn ask him for a long, full drink of the water that he provides, living water that takes away our thirst forever. Do you know this living water in your life? <clears throat> Does your relationship with Jesus fill those dry, dehydrated places inside of you? Does Jesus give you what you need so that you never need again? The key to being able to answer yes these questions 
is knowing that we are thirsty in the first place. For the Samaritan woman, there is no question. She has three strikes against her. Strike one, she is a woman. Strike two, she is Samaritan. And strike three, she's had five husbands and is now living with a man who is not her husband. She is a nobody with a capital N in her world. And as such, she knows her vulnerability and need. It is in front of her every day. It's not that easy for us to know that we are thirsty. We live with privilege. Such privilege, in fact, that when we suffer, we more often than not dismiss it. We say, well, this is a bad time for me, but it's nothing like what so-and-so is going through. Most of us aren't in need of food or clothing or shelter. Most of us are secure in those basic human needs. But that does not take away from the fact that being human is an experience of suffering. While we may not suffer from hunger or thirst on a physical level, we do hunger and thirst in our souls. We hunger and thirst for love, for acceptance, for healing, for security, for freedom from anxiety. We hunger and thirst in our failures and in our losses. We hunger and thirst any time we experience pain. Think about your own life for a moment. What in you is leaving you thirsty? For what do you hunger? I know for me, my thirst is for a relief from the grief that I feel over the loss of my nephew who died this past December. I hunger for a return to normalcy. A new normal would be a relief from these months of adjusting to such a profound absence. What about you? Do you know where your thirst lies? Here is what is so beautiful about Jesus, about the gospel, about the good news of God's love for us. No matter what happens, no matter how badly we screw up, or how deep the pain in us is, God already knows it. God knows it better than we know it ourselves. God is there with that long, cool drink of water just waiting for us to stretch out our hands to receive. God is there with the bread of life that will keep us nourished and full, just waiting for us to stretch out our hands to receive. We have the opportunity each and every Sunday to reach out our hands and have God fill us with all that we need for nourishment. When we receive the sacrament of the Eucharist, the bread and wine blessed at this table of welcome, of love, of acceptance, we are filled with an inward and spiritual gift of Christ's presence within us. This is not a table that we come to because we are worthy because we've done everything right. This is a table that we come to because we are hungry and we are thirsty. And God is there to provide us with what we need. The Eucharist is a sacrament of healing, of wholeness, of bringing us to completeness in Christ. So that no matter what it is inside of us that causes us to suffer, the sacrament of welcome, of love, of acceptance, just as we are, holds the potential 
to transform that suffering into a lived experience of God's love. When you receive the Eucharist today, invite the presence of God in that bread and wine in the community around you to fill those hungry and thirsty places inside. Invite the presence of God to transform your suffering into a place of knowledge of God's love, which provides all you need for life.